Welcome to AWS Report. I'm Jeff Barr. My guest today is Nihar Bihani, product manager on the Amazon CloudFront team. My co-host Lee Zen knows these guys really well and is going to take us behind the scenes. Welcome. Tell me a bit about what you do for AWS. Sure. Uh, so I'm a senior product manager at AWS. I work on the Amazon CloudFront team. And I've been with AWS for four years now. I've been with the CloudFront team for uh, three of those four years. What's the big picture view of CloudFront? CloudFront is a content delivery service. Uh, it's, uh, we have a global network of edge locations all around the world. And customers use CloudFront to deliver their static, streaming, and dynamic content uh, from their origin servers cache that uh, content uh, close to en uh, end users or their viewers and uh, deliver that with low latency, high data transfer speeds to end users around the world. Going back to the beginning, why did we decide to build this? If you go all the way back to the beginning, we started out AWS with S3. And what we noticed is a usage pattern. We saw several customers using S3 as a content delivery service. So they had a little bit of storage and a lot of data transfer that they were delivering to end users all around the world. So what we, when we saw that, what we realized is that there must be a latent need, uh, a demand in the market for customers who want to see the same characteristics that AWS offers. The pay-as-you-go pricing, the low cost, no upfront fees, ease of use, uh, but in the content delivery space. So that's when we decided to build uh, CloudFront as a content delivery service. If I'm a website developer, what, what light bulb has to go on for me to say, I actually need a content delivery service? If you're, if you're a website de developer, and even if you're just starting out, uh, as long as it's important for you to deliver content with low latency, and if you have end users all around the world, or if you want to reach end users all around the world, uh, if you have cacheable content, or even if you have dynamic content, really it, the, the applications are so varied that uh, it just makes sense to use CloudFront for all different types of content uh, so that you can improve the scale, you can improve the availability and performance of your website, uh, and potentially lower costs of delivering your site. You've mentioned dynamic a couple times already, so tell me a bit more about what dynamic content means and how CloudFront can help. If you think of a typical website, it has a mixture of static and dynamic content. Static content are your images, for example. And then dynamic content is when you go to the site and it says, hello, Jeff. Right? That's personalized. So usually, a website like that is architected where static content is delivered via a CDN because it doesn't really change user to user. But dynamic content, that request goes all the way back to an origin server. That origin server could be an EC2 instance or an elastic load balancer sitting in front of the EC2 instance. But as a result of that, all your end users around the world are trying to go to that exact same origin server at that same location. Um, and they see latency issues if they are very far away from that origin server. And, they may all, and you have to uh, be concerned about scaling up your origin server. With CloudFront, you can use the edge locations all around the world to cache some of that content and speed up the delivery of that content from your EC2 instance or your ELB to your end users by putting CloudFront in between. Are there any great customer success stories you can share with us? Sure, so I'll, I'll talk a, about a few customers who are actually using our dynamic content features. Earth Networks is a great example. Uh, if you've heard of Earth Networks, they, they own and run the Weatherbug application. So they are using CloudFront and our dynamic content capabilities to deliver the, uh, the Weatherbug mobile application, the desktop applications, and the web app. And um, they're customizing and personalizing the delivery of that content uh, based on where you're located to show you the weather data for your specific geographic location. Um, so that's, that's, a great, uh, that's a great use case. Another example that I offer is Toronto Star. They're a newspaper company in Toronto, in, in Canada, and they use CloudFront to deliver their entire website, both dynamic and static content, um, so that uh, the latest news stories can be accessed by their end users, their viewers, um, as fast as possible. And also, they take advantage of CloudFront for scalability. We usually don't talk about new features before the release, but are there any things in the pipeline you can tell us about? Uh, yeah, so we are, uh, you know, we're focused on three different areas. We are focused on continuing to add features to enable more customers to use the dynamic content capabilities. We think that dynamic content is something that uh, is currently in, not accessible to a lot of customers because of uh, you know, it being a premium feature with other providers. So we're trying to add more and more functionality so the customers can bring in more of their websites, uh, both dynamic and static content, and deliver that via CloudFront. Second, we're continuing to add more edge locations. Latency and performance, as well as scalability, is, are super important for our customers. So we'll, we have 40 edge locations around the world today. 
and we'll keep adding more locations, listening to our customers, and measuring latencies, and add new locations over time. So you'll see more locations come out this, this year as well as next year. And finally, pricing. Uh, low cost is something that helps make our service and our features disruptive in the market. So we would like to continue to find ways to lower costs and lower pricing for our customers and pass on those savings uh, to customers. So those are the three areas that we're uh, focusing on and you'll see more in every single area over time. Well, I really enjoyed speaking with you and appreciate you taking the time to come by and talk to us. Yeah, same here. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jeff. I'm joined by Jared Guthrie of Amazon Web Services CloudFront, and he's going to talk to us about what it takes to launch a service or a feature. Thanks, Jared. Hi, Lee. Thank you. Tell me, what does it take to launch a feature here at Amazon? Well, our philosophy is quite simple. We start with a customer and work backwards. Um, and then when we do release a product, we iterate and listen to customers more and iterate further. Great. Well, we iterate a lot. And recently, we launched uh, India for both uh, RAV53 and CloudFront. What did it take to launch those two? That's a great question. We're very excited about those two launches in Chennai and Mumbai. Um, is in terms of what it took to launch, we've been working on these features uh, for a couple months, the new edge locations. Uh, we've got it fairly down to a templated process, given we've launched uh, 42 of these now. Uh, basically, we uh, go, we develop the pop locations, and then leading up to the launch, we do a lot of behind the scenes thing, testing them, and then when we're, we're ready to launch, we uh, have a launch call scheduled. Uh, we're doing a lot of the updates to the website, yeah. plan out our communication strategy, our PR strategy, and then on the day of the launch, we do a launch call and we coordinate all these activities so we release at the same time. Cool, so the very last seconds of it are the launch call. Absolutely, the last, um, everything's been checked, the software's been deployed um, and ready for uh, final introduction to, to customers. Great. Well, hopefully our viewers really enjoyed this behind the scenes. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Lee. Thanks for watching AWS Report. I'm Jeff Barr. You can follow me on Twitter or read the AWS blog.